it's amazing how many people don't know their legal rights. So the lesson of today is you have the legal, the responsibility, you have to know what the Bible says. The devil's not going to, uh, you know, mess with you in here. It's at 3 o'clock in the morning when he's going to mess with you. When no one else is around, when symptoms are yelling at you, and you have to get out your Bible and have to defend yourself with it. Right? That's what you have to do. My aunt came to me when I was at a family reunion, Aunt Betty. Smoked for 65 years. I didn't know she had cancer. She came to my door and said, will you pray for me? I have cancer. I have a tumor the size of a grapefruit. It's growing very fast. They want to do surgery on Tuesday. This is like on Friday or like Wednesday. And I said, no, I won't pray for you. I said, pastor, I can't believe you said that. She's not in faith. She hasn't even been in church, right? I have to get her in agreement. Okay, there's a lot of things you have to learn. Why couldn't Jesus heal people in Mark chapter 6? Jesus could not heal people in Mark chapter 6. And he says he was amazed at their lack of faith. So if Jesus couldn't heal people, why would she expect that I could help her? You have to know why couldn't Jesus heal people in Mark chapter 6. He was amazed at their lack of faith, their lack of faith. I knew that it would be her faith, right? I can pray with her, but it's her faith. So I said, now you go home and here's some material. You read what your legal rights are. You read what the Bible says about healing. You renew your mind to what the Word of God says, what your rights are, what Jesus paid for. You come back to church on the weekend, then we'll pray for you. So she comes back to church. I didn't pray for her then either because I asked her. Before I prayed for her, I said, okay, Aunt Betty, do you believe you'll be healed when I lay my hands on you? She said, yes. I'm going to ask her what the devil's going to ask her. Why do you believe that? Why do you think you'll be healed? That's what the devil's going to mess with her, right? He's going to say, why? Well, you know, maybe nothing's, nothing's going to happen. Maybe, how do you know something's going to happen? You know, maybe that's what the devil says. And you have to defend yourself. I knew she had to know how to defend herself. Aunt Betty, why do you believe you'll be healed when I lay my hands on you? And she quoted scripture. This is why. She's very bold. This is why I believe I'll be healed. You got the right answer now. We can pray. I laid my hands on her. The power of God hit her, knocked her to the ground. She laid there for a while. She gets up, says, I saw a huge light. I felt the power of God hit my body. She went into surgery on Tuesday. The grapefruit-sized tumor was nowhere to be found, not even scar tissue. You have to know, you have to know what the Bible says, friend. You have to know and be able to defend yourself with what the Bible says. Guess what? You have the anointing. The Spirit of God is already in you. You already have legal rights to the entire estate. Everything, everything is already yours. You're a member of the household of God, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. You're a member of his household, which means you have the inheritance. And you're a citizen, which means you have the estate. The whole kingdom is yours. You have, there's nothing else God can give you that you do not have already. So you need to understand the law. You have it, but if you don't understand it, you don't have, you can't defend yourself, you won't enjoy it. Right? You, got, you have to know what the Word of God says. When I battle the spirit of fear, let me give you a little advice here. You know, the enemy is like a dog. I found this to be true. When God revealed to me that when I was battling the spirit of fear and he revealed to me how to begin to battle this thing spiritually with the Word of God... I had to speak to it in the name of Jesus, and I had to have scripture to back it up. And he took some time, he trained me about that, and I eventually learned how to turn and speak to it. So imagine a dog is kind of yapping at your heels. You know, a dog, I ride bikes a lot, and they come charging out in their yard. They're, you know, charging full speed, you know, just barking and yapping. And, or if you're walking on the sidewalk, they come up really close, right? They come up behind you, and they get right up on your heel, right? Just barking and nipping, right? Come on, right? And so how long are they going to do that? How long? How long will they do that? A long time. Until what happens? Until you turn, you stop, you turn around and poof. <laughs> that is exactly how the devil is. 
if you don't stop, that's right, if you don't stop, if you think just because, you know, you're a nice Christian going to church, he's going to back off, he is not. He's going to sit nipping at your heels, barking and yapping until you stop and exercise authority and turn around and say, you want some of this? And, you know, you quote the, you quote the legal terms on him. And like those people in that Bible, they withdrew how fast? Immediately. The devil doesn't want to mess with God's angels, man. Back off fast. And the next time, he doesn't quite come in with such energy. So I tell people, when you're dealing with spirits or demon or your spiritual warfare, the first day is the most important, man. Just take your stand, and you just stay, quote the word, and you tell him to back off. Now, he'll back off. you go, oh, that's over. It's not over. He doesn't play that way. He comes back. And this isn't to discourage people. It's just to prepare you. He, he tries to come back. Remember when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness? Three times he said it is written. The Bible says Satan withdrew for a time, waiting for a more opportune time. He's always going to look for an opportune time. But when you first start getting free of this nuisance, he'll, he'll, he'll back off and then he'll try to come back. And like the, so the first day you, you start dealing with these spirits, you know, the spirit of fear, I had to... I had, to, I had to take my stand like 10 times, maybe 15 times, back off every time. The next day, 10 times. The next day, 8 times. The next day, 4 times. The next, then every two weeks. Then once a month. Then once every six months. Then once a year. He just comes to see if there's a access, you know, if I had forgotten how to deal with him. Right? Forgotten my legal position in the kingdom. You know, he's just going to keep testing. That's how the devil works. So you have to know your legal rights. And you have to know what the Bible says. And that's what, as your pastor, I want to see a body of Christ that's not looking for, where's the anointing? You know, where's the next meeting at? You know, where's, can my pastor give me a word of God? Can he give me some direction? You, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, there's offices in the church. Yes, sometimes the Bible says, call for the elders of the church. We're not minimizing all of that operation. But the bottom line is, you know, people say their mom's in the hospital. Well, I don't understand why Pastor Gary's not over there praying for their mom. Well, you're there, right? Well, yeah. Well, then pray for her. <laughs> That's what pastors do. Their job is to equip you to do the works of service in the body of Christ. The American view of church was, was a spectator sport. Everyone comes together for church. The clergy does all the ministry. The people on staff do all the praying. And we go home because church is an event on the calendar, not realizing we are the church. Never taught we were the church. We had professional people do that. <laughs> so anyway, my goal as a pastor is to help you mature, know who you are in Christ, and kick the devil's butt. That's what really basically what I want to see happen. <laughs> That's it. Amen. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.